All right, so this week someone asked me a question that I thought was pretty interesting. They asked the question, why does my ball python keep trying to escape its enclosure? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I've noticed it here in my reptile room that every now and then I'll see a ball python that really wants to get out of the tub. And a lot of times I'll actually open up the tub a little bit and sometimes the snake will come flying out like it's just been waiting to get out of that tub. And then sometimes I'll open up a tub and I'll see where a ball python's kind of been pacing around the tub, kind of going in circles. And a lot of times they'll actually push some substrate to the middle and you'll see kind of like an indentation in the substrate all the way around the sides of the tub. And I'd say that's for, for a rack system with tubs like this, I'd say it's really an exception to the rule. I'd say in most cases, ball pythons are really comfortable just kind of hanging out in a rack system like this. And what I actually did is I kind of did a little bit of brainstorming. I came up with 10 bullet points why your ball python may want to escape its enclosure. And the number one thing on my list is pretty much the number one reason why I think your snake wants to escape, and that is because your enclosure is dirty. I've actually noticed that here in my collection, especially if a snake just goes to the bathroom and it's getting real stinky in there, a lot of times they really want to get away from it. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll come all the way up to the front after they went to the bathroom in the back of the tub trying to get away from it. And as a matter of fact, uh, in nature, I've actually seen where a ball python will go into a burrow underground and as soon as they go to the bathroom, especially if they shed and go to the bathroom, they'll immediately leave that and look for for a cleaner burrow, which is kind of interesting. I've noticed it pretty much the same here in my collection. So what I like to do is I like to go through and spot clean. I try to do it every day or at least every other day to try to go through every single tub and just do a quick spot clean on all my ball pythons. Another thing, if you don't change the substrate frequently, a lot of times the substrate just, even with spot cleaning, sometimes you look at it and it looks really good, but <laughs> what you can actually do is you can do kind of like a sniff test open up that tub and take a sniff of you know what the what the enclosure smells like and if it smells really bad i can almost guarantee that's why your ball python wants to get out of there as a matter of fact i have a few ball pythons that seem they always want to get out of their tub and if i actually go into those ball pythons do a substrate change i actually use a pro coco coconut husk chip like the thicker chip if i go in there and do like a fresh substrate change almost every single time they calm down and they're just hanging out in the back and not trying to escape their enclosure. So I'd say that's pretty much, I'd say probably 99% of the time when you have a snake trying to escape, that's probably the reason. All right, so number two, it could be that you're just not feeding your ball python enough. I've actually seen this, especially on my reticulated pythons that have a higher metabolism. If you don't feed them a lot, you know, well, especially with the reticulated pythons, they're a lot more squirrely and tend to move around a lot more. So it's even amplified with reticulated pythons. But if you, if you don't feed them enough to where you really uh, have enough food into that snake, a lot of times they'll be pacing back and forth. And I've noticed that probably to a lesser degree with ball pythons, but I have noticed it. It seems like the ones that are kind of pace in the tub a lot of times they're just looking for food and they haven't had enough food and I've noticed pretty much across the board if I take a ball python and feed it one or two really good sized rodents and really get some you know some good weight in their belly a lot of times what they'll do is they'll just go over to the hot spot and just kind of hang out over the hot spot digesting it so uh, could be that you're not feeding your snake enough if they're trying to escape all right, so number three, your temperature could be too high or too low. I've noticed this to a lot of my reticulated pythons too. Uh, it seems like the reticulated pythons are almost like the same thing, almost exaggerated because they have the higher metabolism and they move around a little bit more, but I've noticed it on ball pythons too. If you don't have the temperature dialed in just right, a lot of times they'll pace around looking for either a hot spot or a cold spot. And what I actually have here in my, my reptile room, I keep the ambient temperature to about 80 degrees and then a hot spot at 90 degrees. So you definitely don't want to go too cold. You definitely don't want to go too hot. I'd say probably anything like uh, like 95 and above, you definitely want to stay away from really high temperatures, which, uh, which could potentially make your snake kind of pace throughout its enclosure. 
All right, so number four, the humidity can be too high or too low. So I've noticed, uh, especially with the low humidity, a lot of times with the lower humidity, and a lot of people kind of associate the lower humidity with the snake kind of getting stuck in a shed. A lot of times, you know, the, the shed stuck on the snake. But what a lot of people don't know, it's what I've actually found here in my reptile room, if the humidity goes too low, a lot of times the ball pythons will just completely go off of food. So there's that as well as uh, the low humidity and the high humidity. If you have high humidity, you can get respiratory infections. But I'd say uh, on either end of the spectrum, uh, as, as far as the low humidity, the high humidity, it can kind of agitate your snake, which can kind of cause it to pace back and forth throughout your enclosure. And I'd say as far as ball pythons, most people say about 60, about 50 to 60% humidity is pretty much ideal. As a matter of fact, right here in my reptile room, I actually keep my humidity at 56% and every now and then I still have uh, just occasionally a problem with shed, even though I have a whole room humidifier, keeping it pretty humid at 56%. So it seems like every month, maybe I have maybe one or two stuck sheds that I have to work on out of, you know, almost a hundred ball pythons here in my reptile room. So not too bad. I actually like to go into my enclosures and add a little bit more humidity too, uh, as far as kind of dialing in the, the correct humidity. All right, so number five, it could potentially be the incorrect type of enclosure or just the type of enclosure. <laughs> I don't know if that's a correct or incorrect. A lot of people kind of push towards glass aquariums for ball pythons, which seems to be kind of the industry norm. But it seems like every time I went with a glass aquarium, the ball pythons that I would have in glass aquariums, either they're hiding underneath the hide, uh, usually it's like a smaller hide, or they're pacing back and forth in that glass aquarium. And I think it comes down to where the ball python just doesn't feel secure in a completely open, you know, like a see-through enclosure like an aquarium. And what I would actually do, as a matter of fact, if you have an aquarium, what I would do is I would take some kind of like a paper or a background or something, and I would probably enclose like three sides so it's completely blacked out. And maybe put like a bunch of decorations like plants or something in there to where the, the ball python can really feel secure because it seems like most of the times when I've seen ball pythons pacing back and forth a lot of times it's like in the pet stores where they don't you know the, of course they want to have a glass aquarium so everyone can see the snake in order to buy it they have to put it on display but you know as far as long term uh, I wouldn't recommend glass aquariums although a lot of people do use just glass aquariums even without the, the covering on the glass so I think you know the glass aquariums can contribute to a ball python and kind of pacing back and forth. All right, so number six, different personalities. So some snakes, like Bobby here, my bamboo ball python, has a completely different personality than other snakes. And some snakes, as a matter of fact, I uh, have one that is my pastel spider desert ghost female. Her name is Fluffy. And let me tell you, she has a completely different personality than all my other ball pythons. And for whatever reason, she always is trying to get out of her enclosure. Even if I dial everything in, so sometimes it really depends on the personality of the snake. And it seems like with her, she's really sensitive to uh, uh, like a foul, like, like, a, like any kind of a, a bad smell in the substrate. It's like she's always the first one to try to escape. And it seems like if I change the substrate on that one, uh, she always kind of calms down right away. But let me tell you, it can definitely come down to the different personalities. So some are more sensitive and some just like to kind of crawl around a lot more than others. All right, so number seven, insufficient hide. So when I was actually using glass aquariums, uh, I was trying a whole bunch of different hides. I really like the, the, the bigger hides with this one single hole right in the front of the hide. I've actually seen some people use hides where the, it's kind of like, um, like a cutout log where it has holes on both sides of the log. And it seems like to me, if you use a hide like that, a lot of times the ball python really can't feel secure in an enclosed space. 
space with the with the, I think it's kind of an improper height. Although I have seen some really big YouTube you know ball python guys and they're like, hey, use this cheap height. It's like a half a log. But it seems like to me a lot of times when I see those half log hides, it seems like the ball python just really can't get secure as far as getting in that hide. And a lot of times that will cause them to pace back and forth throughout the enclosure. All right, so number eight, you could have a new snake that's just exploring a new enclosure. So I've actually seen this, if you actually buy a brand new snake, you put it in a brand new enclosure, or if you have an older snake, like Bobby here, he's been with me for years and years. If I actually took Bobby, put him in a brand new enclosure that was unfamiliar to Bobby, he would actually pace back and forth throughout that, just kind of trying to get used to it uh, before he settles down. So that's that's pretty normal if you buy a brand new ball python, put them in you know a different environment than they're used to. I would say you probably should expect your ball python is going to be roaming around back and forth until he gets used to that enclosure. All right, so number nine, ball pythons are more active at night. So keep in mind, ball pythons are mainly nocturnal. Some people consider them to be nocturnal. So if you're always coming down in your snake room in the middle of the night, turning on the lights, let me tell you, most of your ball pythons will be crawling around at night versus if you only come down in the daytime and then you know, you're know you sleeping while the ball python is awake, you're kind of on opposite schedule. So you really don't see your ball python move around so there's that component too all right so number 10 uh, ball pythons can go exploring even when nothing's wrong so keep in mind they're just uh, an animal and sometimes animals are unpredictable and sometimes you know animals just kind of decide to go wandering and move around the enclosure sometimes they can wander a lot sometimes a little sometimes it seems like it's seasonal too you know certain parts of the season i think it really depends on the breeding cycle of a ball python it seems like we're when we're coming up in the breeding season my ball pythons are not only eating more but they're also kind of moving around a little bit more i think they're looking for potential mates so that could be another uh, potential reason that your ball python's kind of exploring around the enclosure. But a lot of times, you know, if, if you have everything perfect, you, you know, you change the substrate, you have the perfect temperature and humidity, and all of a sudden, just out of the blue, your ball python starts roaming around, I would say don't overthink it. That's just kind of normal for ball pythons. Sometimes they can go kind of in that mood where they kind of just decide to go exploring and they're trying to get out of the enclosure. And I think a lot of times it really helps to kind of pick them up up and hang on to them like Bobby put them up on your shoulder kind of help them to explore a little bit so they're not always kind of stuck in that enclosure and that's kind of the uh, kind of the ideal thing about ball pythons is they never really get too big to where you couldn't really pick them up and play with them versus like my reticulated python you know that's a hundred pounds sometimes it's hard to take her out and give her a little room to kind of roam around just because she's so big and so long so that's pretty much it. Hopefully with some of these points kind of helped you. Uh, try not to overthink if your ball python is kind of roaming around. Sometimes it's completely normal. Sometimes it can be an indication that there is something that you need to take care of. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.